The topic of today's video lecture is full arenes. So in this video, I am going to explain what are full arenes, the properties of the full arene, and the different types of the full arene. Okay, so moving on towards the full arenes. What are full arenes? Well, full arenes is an allotrope of carbon. Okay, full arenes are the allotropes of carbon, and they consist of carbon atoms connected by single and the double bonds. They form closed or partially closed mesh with fused rings of five to seven atoms. Okay, so this here, as you can see on the screen, is a fullerene, and this is actually a Buckminster fullerene, and this again is a Buckminster fullerene. So fullerenes are just like this. This is just a type of a fullerene. Well, moving on towards, uh, what are the different types of fullerene? Well, uh, what are the different shapes of the fullerene? Well, they can be hollow. Okay, they can be in the form of a hollow sphere, uh, like just I have uh, shown you earlier. This is a hollow sphere, or they may be in the form of ellipsoid. They may be in the form of tube, or many other shapes and sizes. Okay, so first of all, as you can see here, these are different um, allotropes of the carbon. Diamond is an allotrope of carbon. Graphite, fullerene, nanotube, and graphene. All of these are the different allotropes of the carbon. Now moving on towards um, the full uh, fullerenes. First of all, this here is, is a type of the fullerene and nanotube again is a type of fullerene whereas the graphene, as you can see, the graphene is the isolated atomic layer of graphite. Okay, You know that graphite is composed up of many graphene layers and these are connected by the uh, bonds and when this layer is separated, when single layer is separated from the graphite, then this single layer is known as the graphene and graphene as I have just told you, that graphene is an isolated atomic layer of the graphite, which is a flat mesh of regular hexagonal ring, can be seen as an extreme member of the family. Okay, graphene can also be, uh, can also come under the heading of the fullerene. So these three are the types of the fullerenes. The fullerene, this is the fullerene, this is again a fullerene, and uh, graphene is also a member of this family. So moving on towards the types. So we have the closed buckyballs, okay, this, this is the closed buckyball and then what we have is the open-ended cylindrical carbon nanotubes, okay, so these are the uh, open-ended cylindrical uh, carbon, carbon nanotubes, okay, so this is the carbon nanotube and again uh, we have the hybrid structure um, that exists between these two classes such as the carbon nanobards, uh, okay, so what we have the third type of fullerene is the carbon nanobards and what are the carbon nanobards? Well, when nanotubes are capped by hemispherical meshes or larger buckyboards, for example, as you can see here that we have a carbon nanotube and this carbon nanotube uh, has a bud around it and this is an example of a carbon nanobud. Okay, so these carbon nanobud are also the type of the fullerenes. Okay, so now what we have is we have fullerenes that are, uh, we have the um, and these are called the buckyballs. Okay, so we have the buckyballs that are the type of the fullerenes. Then we have the nanotubes that are the type of the fullerenes. Then we have the nanobirds that are type of the fullerene. And again, this graphene is also considered as an extreme member of the fullerene family. So now moving on towards the most famous fullerene, that is the Buckminster fullerene, the C60 fullerene. It is composed of 60 atoms of the carbon and it contains the 12 pentagonal and 20 hexagonal ring. And it is the smallest fullerene molecule that is known and secondly it occurs naturally and it is found in the suit okay moving on towards the empirical formula its empirical formula is c60 and its structure is actually a truncated icosahedron which resembles an associated football ball okay so as you can see here that the fullerene has a shape just like that of a football and it is composed up of 20 hexagons and 12 pentagons so the ventral wall diameter is about 1.1 nanometer and the nucleus to nucleus diameter of Buckminster fullerene molecule is about 0.71 nanometer. The Buckminster fullerene molecule has two bonds, okay, the 6-6 six, six ring bonds means the bond that is present in the hexagonal, between the hexagonal rings is between two hexagons can be considered as a double bond and are shorter than the bond that is present between the 6-5 rings, mean that is present between a hexagon and the pentagon. Okay, um, let me just explain this. Um, Okay, as you can see here on the screen that this here is a pentagon and this again is a hexagon.
okay so each pentagon is surrounded by one two three four five uh, hexagons okay so what we are saying here is the what we are saying here is the six six string bonds between means the bond between the two hexagon is considered as a double bond and is shorter than the bond that is present between a hexagon and a pentagon and uh, its average bond length is about around 1.4 angstrom now talking about another fairly common fullerene has the empirical formula c70 so after c60 we also have c70 and we also have c72 76 c84 and even up to 100 carbon atoms are commonly obtained in uh, the fullerenes well um the most common is c60 and but c70 is also found and the rest are 72 76 84 and even up to 100 these are all rare fullerenes moreover we also have the heterofullerenes they have heteroatom substituting carbons in cage or tube shaped structure so what we have in case of heterofullerene in case of heterofullerene we will have uh, some heteroatom that will be substituted um, inside uh, in place of a carbon in the cage so moving on towards the chemistry of uh, the buckminster fullerene well the fullerenes are stable but not totally unreactive okay uh, they are stable but not totally unreactive the skeleton of c rings is of 20 hexagonal and 12 pentagonal rings just i have told you earlier that it's composed of 20 hexagon and 12 pentagons moreover uh, as you can see that each carbon atom has formed only three bonds one two and three so when each carbon atom is forming only three bonds so we have the sp2 hybridization and uh, um, so due to on due to formation of only three bonds there will be some angle strain and uh, the characteristic reaction of the fullerene is electrophilic addition so what type of reaction fullerenes give fullerenes give um, the electrophilic addition and this electrophilic addition is at six six double bonds which reduces the angle strain by changing the sp2 hybridized atom into the sp3 hybridized one so the change in angle is from 120 degree of the sp2 hybridized to 109.5 degree of the sp3 hybridized this decrease in bond angle allows for the bonds to bend less when closing the sphere or tube and thus the molecule becomes more stable so when this reaction occurs when this electrophilic addition at six six double bond occur what happens the angle strain will be reduced and when the angle strain is reduced what happens um, we will have the molecule becoming more stable so now moving on towards the second type of the um, fullerene and that is the carbon nanotubes well these are the cylindrical fullerenes and only few nanometer wides and can range from less than a micrometer to several millimeters in length they often have closed end but can be open-ended as well they have high tensile strength they have high electrical conductivity high ductility high heat conductivity and relative chemical inactivity as it is cylindrical and planar and moving on to what that is it has um, no exposed atom as you can see here that uh, this is a carbon nanotube and this carbon nanotube is in the form of a cylinder and it has no exposed atom that can be easily displaced only the end atoms are exposed whereas the inner atoms are not exposed examples of application used to produce high tensile carbon uh, cables required by space elevator so they are used in um, the formation of high tensile carbon cable that are used by the uh, space elevators okay so now derivatives of uh, the fullerene so now we have uh, the derivatives the nested bucky balls means the carbon and the carbon nano onions or bucky onions proposed for lubricant so nested bucky balls are also a derivative of the bucky balls and we have nested carbon nanotubes these are known and these are known as the carbon megatubes and then we have linked ball and change dimers uh, the ball and chain dimers and then we have rings of bucky balls linked together so these are all the derivatives of the um, fullerenes so now moving on towards the properties well the heat of formation moving on towards the properties of the bucky balls first of all we have the c60 and c70 okay so the heat of formation of c60 and the heat of formation of c70 um, is 10.16 and 10 9.65 kilocalorie per mole and so these fullerenes are therefore thermodynamically less stable than graphite and diamond okay uh, the fullerenes these fullerenes are thermodynamically less stable than the graphite and diamond because uh, which exhibit the uh, heat of formation of 0 and 0 0.4 kilocalorie uh, per mole respectively okay so graphite has the heat of formation of 0 whereas the diamond has a feed heat of formation of 0 0.4 kilocalorie per mole um, so in that case the fullerenes are therefore thermodynamically less stable than graphite and diamond to chemically modify fullerenes so if you want to chemically modify the fullerenes in most cases cases it is necessary that they are in the form of solutions so for extraction or chromatography separation the solubility also plays a crucial role so now we have to discuss uh, the solubility because solubility plays a crucial role because when we have to modify the fullerenes you have to um 
but you have to solve the fullerene into a solution you have to mix the fullerene in a solution the uh, fullerene should be uh, soluble in a solution so that you can perform the chemical reaction on the fullerenes so solubility C60 is essentially insoluble in polar and hydrogen bonding solvents such as acetone, tetrahydrofuran, or methanol. So C60 is essentially insoluble in polar and hydrogen bonding solvent. Well, it is sparingly soluble in alkanes with um, solubility increasing with the number of atoms. So um, if you have, like, uh, let's just say that you have methane, uh, if you have, for example, let's just say butane, okay, so um, the C60 will be soluble in butane, but it will be less soluble. Uh, in butane as compared to pentane because as the number of carbon atoms increase the solubility of c60 will also increase the solubility of the buckminster fullerene will also get increased in aromatic solvents and carbon disulfides in general appreciable solubilities are observed a significant increase of the solubility takes place on going from benzenes to naphthalenes so when moving from benzenes to naphthalenes the solubility of the um, um, of the um, fullerenes will also goes on to increase so, fullerenes are also are the only known allotrope of carbon that can be dissolved in common solvents at room temperature. Okay, so these are the only um, known allotrope of the carbon that can be dissolved at room temperature in uh, a in common solvent. And fullerenes are sparingly soluble in many solvents. Okay, and common solvents for the fullerene includes the toluene and like that of carbon disulfide. Well, solutions of pure C60 have deep purple color. Solutions of C70 have reddish brown color. The higher fullerenes, uh, talking about from C76 to C84, have a wide variety of colors. And C76 has two optical forms, while other higher fullerenes have several structural isomers. Okay. So moving on towards the spectroscopy, uh, well, performing the spectroscopy uh, of the C60 or C70, we can see that C60 has stronger absorption from 190 to uh, 410, whereas uh, the C70 has the stronger absorption from 410 to 620 nanometer. And the absorptions in the visible region are responsible for the purple color of C60 and that of the red brown color of the reddish brown color of the C70. So the fullerene in particular C60 exhibit a variety of remarkable photophysical properties, making them very attractive building blocks for the construction of photosynthetic antenna and the reaction center models. Well, moving on towards the NMR spectra of C70. When talking about the NMR, uh, you can you know that there are only the carbon atoms inside uh, in a uh, fullerene. So when you perform a 13th carbon NMR spectra, what you will get is only a single signal because all the carbon atoms are alike. Okay. So moving on towards the overall and the physical properties. Well, physical property of fullerene, its behavior and structure depends on the temperature. As the temperature is increased, the fullerene gets converted into C70. Okay, uh, there will be a conversion from C60 to C70 when, they, when the temperature is increased. The structure of fullerenes can change under different pressures. Fullerene has an ionization enthalpy of 7.61 electron volts and its electron affinity is 2.6 to 2.8 electron volts. And now moving on towards the chemical properties, fullerenes are stable but not totally unreactive. As I've just told you earlier, that fullerenes are stable but they are not totally unreactive in chemical reactions fullerene can act as an electrophile it acts as an electron accepting group and it is characterized as an oxidizing agent um, i've just told you earlier uh, that it is an electrophile I mean it is an electron loving and the usually the reaction occurs in the 6 6 bond uh, the bond that is present between the two hexagon and the driving force is the change in the angle strain is the losing of the angle strain so that's an electrophilic reaction and um, it acts as an electron accepting group so fullerenes when doped or crystallized with alkali or alkaline earth metal showcases superconductivity properties well fullerene is ferromagnetic uh, some fullerenes are inherently chiral it is soluble in organic solvents such as just i have told you earlier that it's um, soluble in organic solvent like toluene the chlorobenzene and one two three trichloropropane so that was all for today's video lecture about fullerenes if you have any question you can ask me in the comments and finally if you want to know uh, the synthesis process i am going to explain the synthesis of fullerene in the next videos in the upcoming videos so if you have any question you can ask me in the comments thank you and allah hafiz and lastly do not forget to like the video and subscribe the channel